Ten Nation, it is time. Time to pay attention to Rutgers University, where moments ago they won their first ever Big Ten team tournament title in field hockey. Down the road at Yersek Field, they're going to try to double down and win it in Big Ten women's soccer. Gabby Provenzano and Rutgers taking on the Michigan Wolverines for back-to-back -back tournament titles on the same day. Field hockey and now women's soccer on the Big Ten Network. It's Michigan, your three seed against Rutgers, your number one seed. We'll take a look at the bracket and how they got here. Rutgers has been perfect. The hottest team in the nation. They've won 13 in a row, knocking off Iowa 2-0. to zero. Michigan laying the hammer down on Purdue, beating them 4-1, to one, setting up today's matchup between Rutgers and Michigan. Great to be with all of you. I'm Dean Linky with former Illinois superstar Jackie Manny and Jackie Rutgers making some noise today in Piscataway. They are, and all season long, we've talked about how incredibly hard this conference is. To put together a perfect season is so good. They deserve all the accolades that they've gotten so far. They've got 13 consecutive wins, longest win streak in Division I, 10 0 0, undefeated conference season, and 17 wins overall. And 55 goals for Rutgers. Meanwhile, Michigan. Michigan can score two, 37. They also come in hot, winning six of their last seven. And their ability to keep the ball, attack in numbers, is the best I've seen in this conference. Thursday, they showed it all. Meredith Hawkinson, what a goal that was. So much time and space. And then Hannah Blake with the second one. Great run in. Danny Wolf finishes a PK in that right side netting. And then Nikki Hernandez, left-footed bomb to score the fourth for Michigan. Can Rutgers double down and win back-to-back -back Big Ten tournament titles? The same two teams that met in field hockey meet in women's soccer. It's Michigan, it's Rutgers for that trophy. Coming up next on the Big Ten Network. Women's soccer on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by Marathon. And Marathon is the official fuel of the Big Ten Conference. Marathon driven forward. And by Rocket Mortgage with a playbook on home loans. Rocket can. Rutgers certainly can as they took down a lot of the awards, including the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, the Big Ten Coach of the Year, the Big Ten Midfielder of the Year, and the Big Ten Defender of the Year, of course, Mike O'Neill. Speaking of Mike O'Neill, let's take a look at Rutgers' starting lineup. See that 4-3-3 that they'll come out against Talia Ferry. Watch for some space in the midfield to be able to drive forward against a lot of numbers that like to creep forward in the Michigan attack. And Jen Klein, what a job she's done at Michigan. This is her starting lineup. You'll see Revere on the left this side, typically on the right, but she'll deal with Riley Tiernan, who loves to get forward for Rutgers. So here we go. Rutgers just knocked off Michigan in field hockey. Now it's Rush Rutgers and Michigan and women's soccer and certainly emotional time and we'll take a knee here before we get started. What a day in Piscataway, New Jersey. Rutgers making history, and speaking of history, the officiating crew also making history. First, all-female crew, Nicole Green in the middle, Rachel Smith, Scarlett King, and Maggie Short. First, all-female crew in a women's soccer tournament final. Jackie, we talked to all of the officials before the game, and they were as fired up as everybody else. They were, they were pumped and very honored to be that first crew out there. Rutgers in all black, Michigan in all white. These two teams did meet in the regular season with kind of an asterisk. They were supposed to play earlier. It got rained out, and so they had to squeeze it in. Rutgers won that game four to one, and I feel like both coaches, Jackie Manny, don't really put much merit in that game based on those circumstances. Quick turnaround, lots of fatigue, just a, a game that was different on the schedule, and you're right, I think. And it's a wash, but this game, I think, is going to be a little bit different than that first match. Your sack is packed as the field hockey game was also packed. Perhaps some of them worked their way over here as well. Just a tremendous atmosphere. There was a football game in town yesterday, and Rutgers certainly looking on the up and up making history Rutgers women's soccer made history being the first team to win a regular season team title and now the field hockey team winning their first ever team Big Ten tournament title and we'll see if the women's soccer team can 
accomplish the same thing. Michigan standing in their way. Jade Revere, the gold medalist for the Canada national team. Wolf gets the start today. It was Woods in the semifinal. Of course, we showed you Danielle Wolf scoring that penalty kick. She earned the penalty kick. She took the penalty kick. She did. She calmly slotted that ball home. It's interesting how you just said that as well because it has not been calm at all. It has been electric out here. I mean, three hours before the game, the tailgating, it was just beautiful to see. Music's blaring when we were down there. I was just begging for a ball to come to my feet and want to touch. This matchup here, Tiernan and Revere. Revere was put on the left side for one reason, because of the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Riley Tiernan. What a player she is. Jade Revere switching from right back to left back just to deal with Tiernan. And what a matchup that's going to be because how impressive is Jade Revere on that right side at getting forward, setting play, getting into the attack for Michigan. So I'm interested to see. Great ball in to Hillary Beal, sent by Fouchelle. I'm interested to see if she'll get stuck playing more defense just because of how much attention she'll have to give to Riley Tiernan or if she'll continue to be free, go in the attack, and then really try to pin Tiernan farther back from their goal. Mira Ali had it for a moment. Mira Ali also making history, three-time All-American. Five times she's received some sort of Big Ten honor, including this year where she once again is first team All-Big Ten forward and among the all-time leaders in game-winning goals. So humble every time you talk to her, too. Martin sends it forward. Hernandez and knocked out of bounds. Jade Revere. Jade Revere, one of two Michigan Wolverines that won the gold medal. The Ohio State Buckeyes, Prince for Canada, also won a gold medal. This is played for Stratagakis, former Big Ten Midfielder of the Year in 2019. And it was on this field that they made the Big Ten Tournament Final, actually knocking off Rutgers in the semifinal a couple years ago. Jackie, we were here for that as well. Hawkinson, such a workhorse. Hernandez back over, Stratagakis right to McCall and a good start for Michigan. Michigan, I mean, their ability to keep the ball is so impressive, but their high press system, they get up, you see Hawkinson right on Provenzano, takes the ball away, immediately gets her head up, tries to get something to the box. Michigan almost can't even get numbers forward enough because they transition so quickly, but again, Stratagakis with that ball right by the 18. But their ability to keep the ball, their ability to attack you in layers is so good. Martin. I mean, there are stars everywhere on this field, including Martin, who is routinely first team all Big Ten. The matchups, the 1v1 matchups, Jack, I don't think I've ever seen a game quite like this where there's so much intrigue on the different 1v1 battles. I agree, and they're playing the exact formation, so both teams are in a 4-3-3 right now, so these individual duels that we'll see all over the field are going to be so exciting to watch play out. You've got Talia Ferry on Stratagakis, you've got Lockman going against Becky Fluchel. I mean, these matchups are going to be so fun to watch all game. Rally Lockman. Another first team all Big Ten selection. They get it wide right. Hawkinson. Sent back over. Stratagakis. And that was actually Anderson making the overlapping run as Sarah Stratagakis. A couple years ago, Big Ten Midfielder of the Year, Jen Klein got this team to the Big Ten Tournament Final 2019. He's got them right back in 2021. I think the experience that we have on these two teams especially, but all over the conference is what made it so competitive this whole year. And it's so fun to watch the knowledge, the experience, everything that these players have, have learned in their journey and have been able to expend, extend it into these extra bonus years. It's been such a pleasure to watch these two teams especially. 
Revere. Michigan putting passes together. Hawkinson will give it back. Overlapping run coming. Hawkinson. Hawkinson who scored the first goal in the semifinal victory for Michigan. And McClellan right there in front of Hernandez. Seeing a high press here from Michigan. Rutgers as the number one seed going undefeated. Earning the right to host the semifinals and the final. Big Provenzano, Big Ten Defender of the Year, plays it to the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Riley Tiernan, whose sister was a great player at Rutgers and now is on staff with Mike O'Neill. Kept alive by Amir Ali. There's Frankie Talley Ferry, Big Ten Midfielder of the Year. Long ball over to Kroger. Kroger can hit it. Great shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder defense there from Anderson. He nailed it. These individual matchups are going to be so fun to watch. A little apart there, Avery Kalita, a freshman from Saline, Michigan. Looking for Ali. Handled there by Sidney Shepard. Michigan essentially returning that entire team in 2019 that had eight players that made some sort of all Big Ten recognition. This is Rutgers' turn now as they get it into the 18 for a moment. Fifty-fifty ball won by Rutgers. They play it to Talia Ferry. Jade Revere gets there before Tiernan. Hernandez, perfect touch to Stratagakis. Hawkinson. Minnesota. Stratagakis was in the player pool for Canada. Michigan has done a nice job starting this game, putting passes together. Danielle Wolf. Michigan's movement off the ball, especially, is so hard to defend. Wolf. Knocked out of bounds by Banks. It'll be a corner kick. Corner kick, Michigan. Michigan Wolverines, Raleigh Lofman, what a story she is. We'll have more on that. She has lived all over, not just this country, but different parts of the world down in South America as well, as that'll go out of bounds. A lot of pride right now at Rutgers and you know Meredith Civicole did it in field hockey. Michael Neal going to try to do it in women's soccer. You see that perfect season in Big Ten play. Michael Neal, who starts 10 players from New Jersey. This is New Jersey's team. And let me tell you, folks, it is jam-packed here at Yersek Field as Hernandez. Slicing and dicing. Hernandez so good. With the ball to feed. Stratagakis wide open, but hits it right to McClellan. Hernandez with some crafty footwork on the left here. She takes on not just one, but two Rutgers defenders. Gets it onto her right, fakes them out, goes back to her left, finds Sarah Stratagakis on the top of the six, but can't get enough behind it. Megan McClellan comes up with the save. Yeah, 
Look at this crowd. I mean, are you kidding me? I've caught professional games here that didn't have this kind of crowd. It is a celebration of Big Ten women's college soccer here in at Rutgers. Just incredible. I mean, soak it all in. It's kind of it kind of makes you emotional a little bit. This crowd here, Jackie. Oh, I got goosebumps. I told you I was waiting for a ball to bounce at me just so I can get a one touch on it. Corner driven in. Looking for Wolf headed out of there neatly by Rutgers. Martin, great move. Martin can pop it from there. So Lex to go out wide. Here's Shepard. That Shepard and Martin combination, really good. Kroger read it perfectly. Here comes Rutgers on transition. Play it in the middle of the park. And Michigan steps up to win it back. Kalita, the freshman, really stepping up late in the season, kind of earning that holding midfielder spot. Yeah, she's been really good at just screening the back line for Michigan, and especially for a freshman on a team like this that has so much experience. She's done such a good job at claiming that role. Tiernan flying to the ground. They'll call it a clean tackle. The Rutgers fans wanted a whistle there. Michigan so quick on transition. Rutgers the same thing. It sometimes is like looking in the mirror a little bit with these two teams. Stratagakis off of Hernandez. 55 goals for Rutgers, 37 goals for Michigan, one and two in the conference. Michigan's ability to interchange and come in and out. And here's a look at that foul again, or no call. Hernandez comes in. She gets a clean touch on the ball. Riley Tiernan just steps on her leg almost at the end, but it looks like a clean, clean tackle. Good no call. And again, their ability to interchange and transition and get big quickly, but then also keep numbers around the ball. It's so hard to deal with defensively. Hernandez from Naperville, Illinois. That makes me wonder if you trained her at all. I did. I know Nikki Hernandez well. Picked off by the aforementioned Hernandez. Stratagakis, who is really starting to heat up. Pushed out wide. Misread that time. You can't see it fully on the screen, but Michigan's got the entire Rutgers offense and defense pinned in about a 30-yard space right now. They fly numbers forward. Even Amira Ali was close to the top of the 18. They just pin you in that back line, and then when they turn the ball over, they make it so hard to break their high press. Excellent point, Jackie Manny, as Michigan has won it back again. Martin, so good with the ball at her feet. Ripped away there by Kroger. Excellent two-way player. I know Kroger's another player that caught your eye all season long. Doesn't get all the recognition that some of the other players do, but she's quality. Try that slippery kind of left winger, because she'll just sit on a back shoulder. You'll kind of forget about her for a second, but then her ability to run off the ball, she's quick when she decides to go forward with and without the ball, but then she's so good defensively as well. Good look at Danielle Wolf. Wolf and Wo Wo Woods will platoon. Really, the rotation of both these teams when they bring players off the bench, there is not a drop off at all. And both teams can go really deep, which I think really adds quality to today's championship game. Absolutely, and I think it's why these two teams are in the championship game. I think they've been able to stay fresh. They've been able to rest players when they've needed it. I think the depth of their bench has played such an important role in these two teams' success this year. Stratagakis. One in the midfield by Rutgers, one back though by Michigan. Michigan has won more of the 50-50 balls. I think even Michael Neal on the opposite side for Rutgers would agree with that. Absolutely, they've been able to pin Rutgers. We really haven't talked a ton about Amira Ali or Frankie Taliaferri getting on the ball a lot because they've made them play a lot of defense so far in this game. They haven't been around the goal. Ali, pretty good spin, but it'll fall right to 
Michigan. Stratagactus on it now. Wolf. Now Hawkinson. Hawkinson so good at the give and go and then the ability to strike. Looking for the whistle there. The referee's been consistent. Has not had a ton of whistles. Here comes Tiernan. Tiernan with Hernandez trying to track back. Riley Tiernan, this is a freshman. Tiernan, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. What a run. A tackle knocked away. And it'll be a throw in down near the corner flag. It's a great individual effort by Riley Tiernan, but watch Hernandez. All the way she tracks Tiernan across the field on about a 50-yard run and then again times that tackle really well. It's the second time we've seen Hernandez track back to take care of Tiernan offering support for Revere, but it will be a throw in for Rutgers. The flow of this game, the tempo of this game, the electricity of this uh, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. Good look at Hillary Beal. Throw in. Hillary Beal, a communications major, spent some time with her yesterday. Definitely wants to play at the next level. Gabby Provenzano telling me the same thing as well, that she is hoping to get drafted. Of course, Amir Ali has already been drafted by Portland, where she will be playing with Sam Coffey, I suspect. The Penn State Nittany Lion midfielder, all Big Ten selection, who was also drafted by Portland. Cassidy Banks made the Big Ten all-freshman team. That Banks and Provenzano combination, every good is that, every bit as good as that Martin Shepard combination. And as I say that, they almost gave it away. Stratagakis. Stratagakis and Lofman for me are so good in their ability to just swap. So you'll see Stratagakis in the midfield. You'll see Lofman way out right on the right wing right now. Meredith Hawkinson can come in deeper into the midfield to help set play. It's so hard to defend their ability to interchange between lines. Here's that ball that Banks tries to play a square across the box to Provenzano. But here's where Michigan will just come at you quick in that high press system and it's not just one player it's wolf and then it's lofman it's hawkinson they're all flying forward they're so hard to break down mcclellan who has routinely been a all big 10 selection but the goalkeepers this year the big 10 so good third team this season for megan mcclellan Shepard, whose dad is a big time Michigan man. Boy, Danny Wolf is your traditional number nine. Back to goal, so strong. Shot from distance, deflected off of Talia Ferry. Now Tiernan, so Tiernan has gone over to the other side. Revere has stayed on the left. We'll have to keep an eye on that because Jen Klein actually spent a little extra time with me telling me that Tiernan with Revere, and Revere has the ability to play with both feet, so don't be surprised if you see Revere move with Tiernan at times. They have to keep that organized though, right, when they make that move. She'll track defensively. Tiernan, will still find her on the right and the left. She interchanges quite a bit. But Jade Revere, you're right, is typically on that right flank, but came over to the left trying to deal with Tiernan's ability to, to drive at you and go at you 1v1. So Stratagak is coming off. This is interesting here. With 24 minutes remaining in the first, she cannot come back on until the second half. And I actually thought she was playing really, really well. So an interesting conversation there with Jen Klein, the head coach. in the middle of the park to Hawkinson. Hawkinson, an endless engine. No turn, no turn. Revere will have some options at the end of this season. She can elect to come back, but she is highly coveted even internationally. Here's Amir Ali. 
Collision at midfield, and it'll go against Rutgers and come back to the Wolverines. Watch the defensive ability of Revere right here. You see her on that first one, and she comes all the way over. That's Hawkinson, though, on the tackle. Shepard. But what a great move to dodge Ali as it goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Michigan. It's one of your favorites, I believe. Correct? Absolutely. Well, across the body. I love Shimmy that move. in the center yeah. back. <laughs> You know it, Jackie. Great to be with you again, too. As we are halfway through this first half, no score. Wait no, wait no. Kroger read it perfectly. Kroger, everything you were saying about Michigan moving players around, Rutgers does the same thing. Kroger was on the left earlier, now she's on the right. Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry looking to find Amira Ali. Banks. This is going to be difficult as Wolf was closing down on McClellan. Lofman, Wolf, now Hawkinson. Hernandez is open. Go back into Lofman. Here's Hernandez. Hernandez goes far side. Kept alive there as Sammy Woods has come into the game. And I will say in the semifinal, the combination of Woods and Wolf together was really impressive. We did not see that a ton earlier in the season, but now they've been able to play together. And the referee is going to stop the clock for a moment. Hawkinson tracks back here on Tiernan and just clips her just enough to be able to offset her and stop that run going forward clean. Hawkinson, tough as nails, scrappy. Rutgers starting to look clinical with their passing. A little narrow though. You see Kroger and Tiernan both within the goalpost. Super narrow attack for Rutgers. Again, more of Danielle Wolf being that classic number nine, checking back to reset the offense. And off of that check back, this is what Michigan has going. It was Wolf who started with the check back. McClellan will punch it out. Hernandez can fall on it. And Hernandez goes with her left foot, but not on target. And it just, the way Michigan fills the lanes all over the field, it is so beautiful to watch. I love the decision here because McClellan punches this out and Hernandez sees that she's on the ground, tries to one time it, just gets her left foot around it a little bit too much. But I see where her head's at. She saw that McClellan was on the ground, tried to take advantage by not taking too many extra touches. Just couldn't get a clean hit on it. Hernandez a spectacular season, eight goals and four assists, earning her second team. All Big Ten recognition. Of course, in 2019, she was third team. She was first team last spring. A model of consistency, number 20, Nikki Hernandez for the Michigan Wolverines. 35 for 17. Mike O'Neill looking to make some subs. Jackie, is it me or can you cut the tension with a knife here? I mean, it is, you can just feel it. Absolutely. I think this whole weekend in general, the buzz on this campus, like you've talked about, has been so exciting. But this game, I mean, these stands are absolutely packed, as we showed. Foul called against Michigan. Danny Wolf up high on Provenzano again. Provenzano takes his touch. I don't, I don't know about that, to be totally honest. Wolf just tries to get a foot on it. Hawkinson was there to collect it. Amira Ali. 
Hernandez. This is as good as Wolf has played. I mean, a tremendous first half. Hernandez, Michelle gets there first. They'll play it wide. Woods, back across again. Michigan again does such a good job at stretching you out, but then getting these tiny little passes to unlock you. And Raleigh Lofman, her ability to make different runs into different spaces and then get her face up, right footed, right in that back side netting. Great little sneaky run in, does a good job of keeping the defender on her left shoulder and then just kind of slides that in with the inside of her right foot. A next level season for Raleigh Lofman, who pulls all the strings. Nine goals and six assists for Raleigh Lofman. Those were the kind of numbers that Stratagakis had in 2019. They've kind of flipped as it relates to points, but the combination has been lethal, and Raleigh Lofman has stepped up as a big time player for the Michigan Wolverines. If you're wondering about Raleigh Lofton's next move, she's already accepted a job for Nike. So she is going to move to Portland and work for Nike. We've got subs coming in for both teams. Emma Mysel. Raleigh Lofman has lived all over the world. She was born in Argentina. Her dad was a big time man in the hotel business, now working for Hilton. As you see, Raleigh's role, then Brazil, then LA, then Winston-Salem, Dallas, the Bay Area, San Diego, and Orlando. And she was homeschooled that whole way. Her mom went to Penn State and said, you've got to go to a Big Ten school that has a great football program. She's like, Michigan's got a great football program, so she goes to Michigan. Such a cool story. Ali Lop, and a pleasure to spend time with her yesterday, and she delivers the first goal of the game here in the Big Ten championship match. Hernandez has been good as well for Michigan. Coming into the game for Michigan, Hannah Blake from New Zealand. Hoffman will get a break, well earned. The only goal of the game with 17 minutes remaining. Over the top, looking for Talia Ferry. Martin is there, so is Talia Ferry. She'll stay with it. Martin, safety first, will send it out of bounds. Corner kick, corner kick, Rutgers. Skyler Anderson, the senior from Boulder, Colorado. A veteran team for Michigan. A veteran team for Rutgers as well, mixed in with some outstanding youngsters. Really, both teams, again, like looking in the mirror somewhat. Near post, ping ponging around. Woods, who goes down to the ground, and she'll get the whistle. Here's a look at that again. Gets knocked around a little bit in the box. Woods tried to clear. Allison Lowry goes to ground. Would have been a tiny jersey pull right there, but... has been good on winning those second ball opportunities and then the transition has been on. Hawkinson. Woods. 
Davis dribbles into trouble. Early drop, right. oh, Rutgers will win it back. tell that the goal from Michigan has taken a little bit of the energy, the electricity, the buzz away. And it's kind of crept in Rutgers' favor since then. Seeing Talia Ferry on the ball a couple more times. Mira Ali is out right now, so Talia Ferry slipped higher into that nine roll. Throw in for Revere. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hernandez. Yeah. That's Hernandez ripping through two players. She's going to get whistled for the foul, but you really have to appreciate that effort. Good job, team defending 2v1 here for Rutgers. I love the energy behind this and the will and the grit to try and come up with that ball. Well done by Rutgers to hold her off and draw the foul. Allison Lynch especially. Yay, Danny! Danny Wolf. Wolf even accidentally won it back. Hernandez will get the whistle and the Michigan Wolverines with a 1-0 lead will have a dangerous free kick. Here's a look at that foul again. Danny Wolf ends up getting her head on it. Hernandez gets a touch. And Daigle comes in with her body after the ball's off. Last time Rutgers trailed was against the Ohio State Buckeyes on the road. They would come back to win that game. That was back on October 3rd. As they trail here to Michigan. And Michigan looking to add to it. A dangerous free kick. Hawkinson, shot one, bounce to McClellan, and picked up easy by McClellan. The shot coming from Hannah Blake off the bench, the junior from New Zealand. This ball heading over near the fourth official's table. Jen Klein not done going to her bench. Emily Layson coming in. There is Jen Klein, won a national championship at Southern Cal as the associate head coach with Kadani McAlpine. And had been a head coach before, wanted to go to Southern Cal, learn a few more things. When the Michigan job opened up, she jumped at it. And what a job she's done for Michigan. Got here in 2019, unfinished business, losing to Penn State. Now back to take on Rutgers here for a Big Ten tournament title. Turnaround that she's had over this program, and I think her experience and knowledge that she gained in so much success on the West Coast obviously helps that. But I will say my husband was so excited when she was being brought into this conference because he, he knew she was going to do big things, and, and he wasn't wrong. She's been very fun to watch as she's really just made this program into, into something very consistent. Well, one thing you can say about both of these teams is they love to play. I mean, it is beautiful to watch. They move the ball like we're seeing right now. Obviously, Michigan with an advantage, but you know Rutgers has the firepower to come back in it, but both teams come to play. Look at these passes, one after another. The only thing we're missing is the Ole, Jackie. Right side, and it'll be a corner kick, corner kick Michigan. No, I completely agree. Michigan's ability to just knock the ball around, spread you out is so good. And Rutgers, what I've loved always, and especially in terms of talking with Mike O'Neill before games, is he's so big on these players being confident in their moments and really just having them play, having them figure it out, having them come onto the field and, and having that knowledge and the ability to just make their own choices. And then if it doesn't really happen like it's supposed to, have the confidence to get back on the horse. And he's preached that year after year. I think that's one of the reasons why so many underclassmen can come into this program and make a stamp on the conference or the games because they have the confidence to be able to go into a game and, and play and make decisions on their own. Here in the 
wisdom, a former All Big Ten midfielder from Illinois, Jackie Santa Catarina Manny, as Michigan sends it back in. Michigan will win it. Deflected away. Good close there by Rutgers defensively. Rutgers off the close, trying to get the transition going. This is a good ball right here by Rutgers, electing to go backwards to go forwards. They find Tiernan. As Tiernan's back over on the left side, and Revere on the right side, and Revere will stay on the left to keep an eye on Tiernan. it back. And Rutgers has to get numbers behind the ball. They do. We've got so many numbers behind the ball that they're having a hard time getting it out of their end and finding Frankie Talia Ferry, who looks like she's just kind of on an island by herself right now. We'll see if they can start something here. As you say it, Talia Ferry gets it. Talia Ferry. And a little give and go and a foul on Michigan. That was all through the effort of the player you just mentioned, Frankie Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry over the ball. Talia Ferry. And Hillary Beal has it. Hillary Beal, a tremendous leader, as I mentioned, a communications manager. And if you remember in the semifinals, she pounded the ball and almost spilled. I asked her about that, and she's like, look, I don't want to have to make saves. It's my job to have my defenders in the right position where I don't need to make saves. And if I don't need to make saves, then we're going to do fine. And, you know, you often know that goalkeepers are thinking it, but actually just say it that simply put was pretty fantastic. I think if you're really good at your jobs, then you're not making safe. So I, I like how, how she said that because you're right. When you've got a, a communicator and your goalkeeper who can put you in the right spot, that goalkeeper shouldn't have to get too many touches on the ball. Talia Ferry. What Rutgers is lacking right now is they're so good when they get their outside backs forward into the attack. They provide a lot of the width for Rutgers, but they've really been pinned. They haven't been able to get forward. You saw Frankie Talia Ferry on the ball looking into the wide space, but she doesn't have any options. I think if those outside backs for Rutgers can get forward, provide the width, then they can start getting some things going attack-wise. Rutgers with just one shot. Nine shots for Michigan, four of them on frame. Rutgers with those 55 goals on the season, but they have not been dangerous. They have not put themselves in a really golden opportunity to get off a quality shot so far, Jackie. I'm going to say, I repeated myself numerous times, but Michigan has made them defend so much this half. They've completely pinned them back to points where you've seen the entire Michigan team within 15 yards front to back of each other. Michigan's done such a good job at getting their number forward and pinning players like Riley Tiernan in the back line. We saw Sam Kroger back in the back line a ton, and it's so hard to get your attack going when your key players are stuck playing defense. So well said, knowing that Rutgers average is almost 20 shots a game. Really have to tip your hat to the Michigan defense as Revere will earn the whistle. And the freshman Tiernan, who really was a delight as a freshman, a little frustrated here as the matchup between Revere and Tiernan, one of those 1v1 matchups that we were talking about right now in favor of Michigan. When you're a player like Tiernan and Talia Ferry, when you you get your game going by getting plenty of touches on the ball. Both of them, both of them just haven't been able to, to
to really get a rhythm so far in this game. Five minutes remaining here in the first half. With Michigan, your three seed on top of Rutgers. Your one seed, one to zero, Raleigh Lachman. First team all Big Ten selection with the only goal of the game. Michigan again winning it and keeping it. A little give and go there with Hannah Blake. And Blake trying to earn a corner kick and does. Corner kick Michigan. The Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship on the Big Ten Network. We're in Piscataway, your sack field. Blake coming over to take the corner kick. Rutgers number three in the nation, RPI, Michigan number 10. They are locked for the NCAA tournament. You got to figure Purdue, Penn State, Ohio State are in. Wisconsin with a ton of quality ties. As this one is served in, Michigan trying to make it 2-0. Miss hit that one over the crossbar, still 1-0. It's time to pay attention to the RPI. Wisconsin right at 42. Got to give Erwin Van Benekom a little credit as well. 46 in Michigan State at 55. Of course, Dave Diani, they won the Big Ten tournament last year to get in, and they were back here at the semis. They will most likely not get in. I feel like it's fair to be talking about Wisconsin. I feel like the Buckeyes are in. Of course, what do I know, Jackie? But they played the most ridiculous schedule I've seen in some time. Did. And man, did they have adversity thrown at them this whole season between injuries, some fluky red cards. And they had to overcome a lot all year. And they'll have some players back if they do get in. They'll have some players back, and Paula Wilkins, Wisconsin Badgers, will hopefully have some players back as well if they get a deserved nod as Hernandez has gone the distance, and she has tracked some mileage out there. Hernandez is having a game. She's actually had a lot of 1v1 situations with Riley Tiernan. We thought we'd see more Tiernan and Jade Revere, but Hernandez has been tracking back. She's been all over this left flank of offensively and defensively. Martin. Late in the middle. This is better from Rutgers. This is what Mike O'Neill wants to see from the Scarlet Knights. And as I say that, a sliding tackle in the middle of the field wins it back from Michigan, and Martin plays it back to Shepard. Ten shots for Michigan, one for Rutgers. So really, Jackie, based on that, the score line I think is fair. Absolutely. I think Michigan has had a ton of this first half. I think you see the fatigue starting to set in on the back Six especially for Rutgers because they've been playing a lot of defense. You need to remember too that Stratagakis will come back in the second half having rested almost 25 minutes. I mean, she came out pretty early with some instruction from Jen Klein and she'll be back in there. So they'll beat fresh legs. I mean, really well managed. And then by beating Purdue four to one, if you remember Jackie Manning, Jen Klein was able to rest a ton of players in that semifinal game. Yeah, a little different than what Rutgers had to deal with. I mean, they came out with that game later in the second half. And you're right, I think Michigan has some fresher legs. I think right now it's just more about Rutgers possessing the ball a bit more. I mean, they've got that high press, but even in moments like this, knock the ball around a little bit, get your breath back, get your legs back, and then slowly start to creep that ball forward in the wide position so that you can find Tiernan, you can find these players up top, and then get your numbers forward. New players in there, Tiernan, the one only one staying. When you think about that front three as Ali and Talia Ferry have gone to the bench. That is standard protocol. I did ask the entire coaching staff about that. Like, how do they feel about it? And they all said they hate it. They, want, they don't want to come out. They want to stay in there. But we're 10-0 for a reason. It's working. So they learn to deal with it. And it's about the team. You never wanted to come out, right? <laughs> I did not. I did not. Especially this time of year. I will say, I don't ever remember playing a Big Ten tournament with this awesome of weather. It was always freezing when we played. 
Really beautiful weekend here in Piscataway. Congratulations again to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights field hockey team winning the first team tournament in the Big Ten Conference, knocking off Michigan. But here it's Michigan 1, Rutgers 0 with the final seconds counting down. A dominating first half from the Michigan Wolverines. Really, I think they frustrated Rutgers a majority of that half with their movement, their interchanging. Raleigh Lofman was getting in spaces. She got a goal because of it. Hernandez on the left and Aaliyah Martin set and play in the back line. I mean, this team was on point in all lines of the field. High fives for Raleigh Lofman, the goal scorer right there. What a season she has had. Her ninth goal of the season. One away from double digits. And you see Sarah Stratagakis. Love to see that as Stratagakis went out early. Both of those players will be well rested when they return for the second half. Michigan Wolverines, 10 shots to just one for Rutgers, plus four corner kicks to just one for Rutgers. As we are pleased to be joined by the head coach, the Michigan Wolverine, Jen Klein. And Jen, on what is truly a celebration of women's <laughs> college soccer, that was a dominating performance. Would you not agree? Yeah, I think our team came out with a lot of energy. I'm really proud of just our defensive pressure. I mean, you look at a Rutgers team that is as talented as they are with the attacking personalities that they have. And for us to keep them right now with uh, one, one shot, I think is uh, really, really impressive. Talk about Raleigh Lofman and her ability to move and just be dangerous in that attacking third for you guys she's been I mean since she's been here at Michigan she's always done a fantastic job of finding space and just being dangerous and um, really has come along so well in the last stretch of our season here with getting goals so just really really proud of her the way you've managed this team has been special to watch I'll let you go talk to your team thanks for being with us Jen Klein thank you very much appreciate it all right Jen Klein the head coach for the Michigan Wolverines as Michigan has a 1-0 lead, courtesy of Raleigh Loffin, her ninth goal on the season. At the half, in front of a big crowd, it's Michigan 1, Rutgers 0. <laughs> Women's soccer on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve, and by Discover, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Fantastic weekend here in Piscataway where the Rutgers field hockey team has won. But we've got more sports coming Tuesday. Basketball returns to the Big Ten Network with a triple header featuring the Hoosiers, 11th ranked Illini, and the Hawkeyes in action. Basketball is back Tuesday on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. We're in Piscataway, New Jersey. We'll come back and show you the Big Ten awards where it was almost a clean sweep for Rutgers. Soak it in, those youngsters are the future of the game. And of course, women's soccer rolling on here in Piscataway. It's Michigan one, Rutgers zero. Rutgers dominating the postseason awards. Why not undefeated Big Ten Coach of the Year? One of the sweetest men you're ever gonna meet, Michael Neal winning the Big Ten Coach of the Year. So impressive this whole year. We've talked about it. It's just incredible to put together a perfect season like they had. And he's just so much fun to talk to on the phone and hear the pride in his voice for this program. He had four players on the first team. Ali, Tiernan, Taliaferri, and Provenzano. The goalkeeper, Kozo, was the goalkeeper of the year for the Big Ten. Martin and Lopman, the goal scorer. And how about Sarah Griffith? What a season she had for Purdue. Such a cool story she has. The comeback that she had after a huge injury to her back and to be able to put together the year. Hearing Coach Drew Roth talk about it just gives you goosebumps. Coffee and a bellow from Penn State. But once again, Raleigh Lopman, the first team all Big Ten senior, the goal scorer in this game, and a smile to show. Michigan one, Rutgers zero. They're checking the numbers, but it might be a record-setting crowd here today at your sack field for the Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship with Michigan with a 1-0 lead at halftime. Let's take a look at the goal for the Michigan Wolverines. Ryan Lofman, who's just been all over the field, breaking down Rutgers left and right, gets into the box. It's a ball in from Sammy Woods, and Lofman again just puts herself in a great time run, gets it on her right, and just rolls that into that left side netting with the inside of her right foot. Great little slotted ball in between the back line and Megan McClellan for that. Michigan has been so good with their ball movement. 
Yeah, it's kind of been the story of this first half. The ability to be able to get numbers wide, spread Rutgers, and then just find different pockets, different seams, different channels. And then their timing on their runs has been so good, too. This goes into a corner kick, but it's been Michigan on the ball and in possession all first half. Check out these stats right here. Michigan and Jen Klein said it in the interview, a perfect first half. And it's not like the Michigan defense has been doing that great to be able to stop these shots. It's just that Michigan in general has pushed Rutgers so far into their end that they've been defending all half. We come back, we'll hope to talk to the Big Ten Coach of the Year, Mike O'Neill, and see if he's got the answers in Piscataway, where Michigan leads at 1-0. Women's Soccer on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Michigan won the Big Ten Tournament in 1997. That's one of their two. They also won it in 1999. Trying to win their third, and they have the lead at the half. Raleigh Laughlin with the only goal, but the man who might have the answers is Rutgers' top man, Mike O'Neill. Mike, really high press there from Michigan kind of dominating that first half. What was the message to your team at halftime? Yeah, we just got to deal with the press, you know, but we have to play with a bit more confidence, a bit more courage. You know, we're doing some defending, and then when we win the ball, we were still defending. So we need to make sure that we have possession options, uh, build the attack, and then we go from there. How do you get your outside backs into the game, find a little bit more width in the second half? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, Jackie, is just making sure, like, when we get it, we just got to establish our shape, right, and then build our attack. We haven't done that. Mike, an attendance record, a celebration of college soccer. You're a key part of it. Thanks for making this happen. Thank you so much. Mike O'Neill, the top man for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And Gabby Provenzano, I was watching the huddle. It was Gabby Provenzano in the middle of the huddle. And let me tell you, when Gabby Provenzano talks, people listen. So we'll see how they respond. They don't call her the general for nothing. She had a busy, busy first half. And just watching that first half and how much of the ball Michigan had to, to look at the scoreboard and see that it's only 1-0. It was hugely in part to her and her communication ability to deal with that high press system of Michigan. So here we go, Michigan back out there in their white uniforms, Rutgers in all black. Hawkinson. Already a better start for Rutgers just with those four black jerseys around Hawkinson to try to win it back because that looked like what Michigan did in the first half. Absolutely. I think Amir Ali being back at the top and then Frankie Talia-Ferry being able to drop back. She can hopefully see more of the ball in the beginning of this half. But already you're seeing Emily Lynch, Emily, excuse me, Allison Lynch get forward on this left side. Emily Mason on the right who's great at getting in the wide scenes and wide spaces. We didn't see her on the ton, a ton on the ball in the first half. Lachman back in there. Stratagakis who had a long break. I think she could be a difference maker here as well if Michigan wants to hang on and win their third title. Rutgers try to win their first Big Ten tournament title in women's soccer. This just a few hours after Rutgers won their first ever team title in field hockey. Great to have the Big Ten commissioner, Kevin Warren, in the house for field hockey and women's soccer as well. Wolf will drop it back. Skylar Anderson. Danny Wolf. I thought she was outstanding in the first half for Michigan. She was, like you said, her ability to be able to find the ball, hold it up, allow players to join in the attack was a huge part of Michigan's success in the first half. Shepard. Hawkinson, a little give and go there with Skylar Anderson. Hawkinson, Hawkinson, good move. Hawkinson into the 18 and a corner kick. Corner kick, Michigan 
What a celebration of women's college soccer, a new attendance record. And we are here, 5,103 in attendance today. They were tailgating three hours before this game started. And of course, it comes right after the Rutgers field hockey team won the Big Ten tournament over Michigan. Michigan trying to answer the bell in women's soccer with a 1-0 lead and the corner kick as it's knocked out of there. Jackie, 5,103 at your sack field. It's such an awesome, awesome environment. What a day to play soccer right now. I mean, the buzz and the, the volume is just so fun to be a part of today. Especially the Rutgers and the Michigan banners that are hung by Mir Ali. As we talked about, Amira and Frankie both getting their standard rest in that first half. So they'll come out with rested legs, ready to go. And I say that Amira Ali looks to be in some pain. Amira Ali, when needed, has the ability to come up with miraculous goals. It could be one of those days, and it's definitely needed. That's the thing, I mean, we've been pretty Michigan heavy just because of how much they've had of the ball, but it's still 1-0, and with the ability that this rougher side has and the experience and success that they've had all season, they've got plenty of talent, plenty of weapons to draw on in the second half to make this a game. So nice to talk to Amir Ali's dad right before the game, coming up to say hello. It's been a great run for Amir Ali at Rutgers. Three-time All-American and looking to make it four. Michigan has come out and put the press on Rutgers, so we might need to see if Rutgers goes a little bit more direct to deal with some of this press. That might be the option for Rutgers. Absolutely, especially with Amira Ali up there, tearing in to be able to play off of her, I think. Just to release that pressure, get your numbers forward, get out of your end. I think some long balls here and there just to, to shake things up is going to be necessary, especially to try and get it over the head of that defender right there, Aaliyah Martin, because when she's on the ball, she's so good at setting play. Hey, ball, ball, ball. Nice run forward by Martin to win it. Pretty much a mainstay on that first team all Big Ten selection as she tried to play it to Hawkinson, but it was Martin who stepped up. There she is, number four, the captain, a leader in every aspect. She was a holding mid in a lot of her playing career, so her ability to be comfortable on the ball, be able to find different spaces and channels is so good. Anderson. Danny Wolf. That's old school number nine right there, right? And what I mean by that, number nine is what they call the center forward. That is old school right there, Jackie Manny. So strong on the ball. Just great in the air, too. You'll see her get up on attacking set pieces. To be able to hold a defender on your back like this, take it off your chest, calmly settle it down, and then play and keep the ball in possession. It's a hard, hard skill to do. And we've seen her do that numerous times this game. Kroger, Kroger switches the point of attack. That's exactly what Jackie Manny asked Mike O'Neill at the halftime interview. Trying to get it on the outside channels. They just tried to do it right there. Much better by Tiernan to be able to establish that wide space. She held her space in that pocket. Kroger saw that channel. It's a great ball out wide. If they can get that going a little bit more. You'll see more numbers forward in the attack for Rutgers. Mara Lee. Martin did enough to get her body, and Beal picks it up. And you know Beal was barking out orders out there, telling Martin she was coming to get the ball, and there she is. Hillary Beal, Martin in front of her. Strong combo there as your lead center back. Shepard next to Martin, and then Beal right behind.
Rutgers, Michigan, Purdue, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Indiana right there on the bubble. Love to see all those teams make the NCAA tournament. Favorite time of the year right here, Jackie Manny. You celebrate a conference championship and then you roll right into the NCAA tournament. This Rutgers team made it to the College Cup in 2015. Stratagakis side of her foot over to McClellan. I really feel like both these teams have what it takes when you think about great goalkeeping and creating chances like this one to make a deep run. Absolutely. Sarah Stratagakis starts this run in the midfield. It's a great ball in between the center backs. Just can't get enough juice behind it. Stratagakis. Danny Wolf. Hawkinson. Hawkinson has shown the ability to keep possession, earn corner kicks. This time, Alexa drop it back. Riley Lofman, the goal scorer, will square it. Here's Jade Revere. Again, has got that gold medal. I asked her where it was. She said it's in Jen Klein's office. I thought that was really cool that Michigan's holding the gold medal for one of their star players. Right side, Anderson. I thought it was cool, but at the same time, I don't know if I'd give it up. I think I'd look at it every night, Jackie. <laughs> I might give it up, but it'd be like a renting. <laughs> Short term. I hear you. Anderson. Anderson. Miss hit it. Jade Revere winning the gold medal. Canada had been knocking on the door. They had two bronzes, as you know, Jackie, and they took it home, the gold. Such a great experience for her, and to be able to come back to college after that, I mean, it speaks volumes for her ability as a soccer player, as young as she is. Standing Wolf winning it again. lofton has got one. Woo! Feeling it, a little bit of a heat check for the senior. Knowing her ability to strike a ball, Rutgers has to get pressure on her quick. As soon as that ball's on her foot, you don't even want her to face up at this point because of how hot she is in terms of her scoring ability. But it's plenty behind that, just a little bit wide left. Knocked out of bounds. Raleigh Lofton scored in four of the last five games. You have to remember, Rutgers, the hottest team in the nation, 13 straight without a loss. And they've not trailed since falling behind against the Buckeyes in early October. It'll be interesting to see how they deal with that adversity of being behind in front of this magnificent crowd. Oh, especially at home, you know that that energy, they're going to be able to ride off of it at some point. I'm still just waiting for them to find their rhythm, but even this little sequence, they, they lose it right there, but that little sequence higher up in their end, they're keeping the ball a little bit better. I think if they can keep building off of those little momentum, those little patterns up high on the field, they'll be able to get something going. And here's where Rutgers loses it. Kroger comes in. Doesn't get a whole lot of the ball. Cleats are up on it. Even something like that, though, an aggressive play, a foul, is something that momentum-wise Rutgers can take from. Let's see if they do it right here. Ali gets to it. Amir Ali. Oh, the ball just got behind her. The crowd was feeling it. It felt like an Amir Ali moment. And Tiernan. Hernandez tracks back to knock it out of bounds. I thought it was going to be Amira Ali magic. Just gets stuck a little bit under her foot. Riley turned and finds Amira Ali. She takes a great touch to get herself on the right, but then Michigan commits so many numbers around the ball so quickly that they disrupt Amira Ali's chance. Sydney Shepard, the senior from Danville, California. 
I mentioned her daddy, big time Michigan man, super successful out in California. There's no doubt where she was going to play. She'll fly a little under the radar, but quality player, number 21, Shepard. Such a good match with Aaliyah Martin. And Shepard kind of takes an awkward fall there as she was defending Amir Ali on that last opportunity. Stratagakis. Lofman. Now over to Revere. It is a thing of beauty to watch these Michigan players interchange. You touched on it in the first half, but to see it, to see them weaving and interchanging. And one time Hawkinson is inside, other time she's out. Hernandez, then Lofman, then Stratagakis ties in. Wolf checking back. All of these passes connecting for Michigan. And that's what it is, is their ability to keep the ball and, and pass allows them to get numbers forward, allows them to keep numbers right around the ball in these wide channels, in the middle, wherever they are with the ball, there's always numbers around and little tiny triangles of space so they can keep the ball, but then as they keep the ball in those tiny spaces, people are getting wide, providing the width, stretching the attack. They just come at you in every single direction. Throw in for Rutgers. Hawkinson leaves everything on the field, every game, every time. Another thing with these girls, I mean, their fitness level is on full display in terms of Michigan right now because not only are they moving constantly in the attack and keeping possession, but you see Hernandez tracking back. You see Hawkinson tracking back. I mean, these girls are all over the field working on both sides of the ball right now. Stratagakis, but it's Amira Ali. You can see Amira Ali stepping up her game here in the second half for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Ali in the middle of the park. Rutgers has won 13 in a row for a reason. Because of that, you feel like they're going to make some noise here in front of this new attendance record of 5,100 plus. The Rutgers field hockey team just got a salute as they just came in. If you were wondering part of that noise, the Rutgers field hockey team is here. And they are being saluted while this game is going on. Just want to let you all know that. Pretty awesome. The first ever Big Ten tournament title for a Rutgers team. And it happened against Michigan right before this game started. Just right down the road over at the Bauer Track and Field Complex. And they're here now, Jackie, to cheer on their Rutgers women's soccer team. <laughs> that adding to the energy that is Rutgers University right now. Unbelievable crowd. And they were here early, ready to go. Let's go, Blue! Rutgers trying to break down that back line of Michigan. Revere and Tiernan, and Tiernan goes down. That matchup was one of those 1v1 matchups, and so far, it's been Revere. Tiernan's such a bright future, though, just a freshman. 
At Rutgers, they try to play it to Amir Ali. Ali, like she got tangled up there a little bit. No whistle. And Amir Ali comes in hard, and Amir Ali will earn the whistle. Amir Ali bringing it here in the second half for Rutgers. See that will of Amir Ali coming right here. It's her defensive presence right now that's doing more than her offensive. She pulls that foul from Michigan. She's tracking all over the place, trying to see the ball more, trying to get her foot on the ball to make something happen for this Rutgers side. I said it before, we feel like she puts her superwoman cape on, and it's Amir Ali time. Michigan, 12 shots, Rutgers just one. This would be a good time to get that second one. Talia Ferry, well-weighted ball, but right to Beal. Good idea, just needs to bring it out next time a little bit closer to the six. Absolutely, just put that a little bit too direct into Hillary Beal's hands. Jade Revere. She looks to be in some pain. He has obviously had a busy, you think about playing in the spring and then joining the Canada Olympic team, playing all that soccer. Those legs, that body has played a lot of soccer from the spring into the summer, into the fall. A lot of miles on those legs in the last six months or so. And we've talked about in terms of kind of having that back-to-back -back season because of COVID. They played in the spring, wasn't much of a break, and then they play in the fall, and she added an Olympic tour onto her resume in between there. So lots and lots of wear and tear on those legs right now, absolutely. So Jen Klein firing up. Perhaps a sub here for Jade Revere. Ironically, if you remember in 2019, and you and I have been around the game a long time, one of the strangest things ever, Michigan beats Rutgers, and on the celebration, I'll never forget it. Like, it's one of the most crazy moments. If you remember, on the celebration, Revere sends it across. Michigan wins. The backup goalkeeper, bless her heart, as my mom would say, hits Revere in the head, fully concussed, and she missed the final. I mean, the team went nuts. The bench rushed the field. Everyone was so excited. And the goalkeeper came in and just with their knee on the celebration, caught the back of Revere's head. That revere Tiernan battle has been epic today. Here, this is the last tackle that we see her take before. I don't see anything come up in that one, just based off of her ability to get up and run back. But I saw a little bit of a grab at her knee. Her left knee was what she was kind of tugging on. But well, you talk about fair play from the Big Ten. Frankie Talia Ferry coming over to give Jade Revere a high five in the Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship game. Fair play to the Big Ten and women's soccer. Really, a senior group upperclassmen specifically have been through quite a lot in the last year, two years. Frankie Talia Ferry, fair play and what a career. The focus of our State Farm State of Success, 110th career game played, an all-time NCAA record. One of your favorite players, Jackie, but she needs to make an impact here in this one. Gotta get her on the ball mark. She's just kind of been completely cut out of this game, and she's up higher right now. Here, Ali's been dropped back a little bit further. I think if they can find Frankie's feet and her ability to create something in the attack is so good. With Revere out, we'll see how Michigan will deal with this. It certainly made a difference with Revere out against Penn State in 2019 as Penn State won that thriller in overtime right here on this field. And now Revere, the way she was walking off, did not look comfortable as you see Skylar Anderson 
Skylar Anderson at right back. We need to find him. Coming into the game for Rutgers. Number Shea Holland Number coming eight, in for Cassidy Kyle Banks. Dagle. Number 55, Emma Mizo. And number 71, Shea Holland. Wolf. Shepard, Talia Ferry, Martin, Martin sends it long, there's a lot of soccer left, the twists and turns here with Revere now on the bench. I feel like something's gonna happen. Danielle Wolf is offside for that play. Is Jen Klein gonna make another change? Sarah Bridenstein, the answer to the question that I just posed a moment ago is the player that is in for Revere. So Sarah Bridenstein, heavy minutes here. Sophomore from Rochester, Michigan. Frankie Talia Perry to Ali. Ali on the turn. And it'll come back to Michigan. though starting to play themselves into the game. Frankie Talia Ferry finds Amira Ali in the middle of the 18, tries to quickly turn Shepard. She gets it on her left. Just can't get it on frame. Mountains of time left in this one. Just under 24 minutes. See a little more of this now. A little bit more direct. And certainly Breidenstein, big shoes to fill, replacing Revere at that left back spot. shoes, and you might see her still provide that width, but she might stay home a little bit. Let Skylar Anderson attack on the right side, keep them balanced with the three in the back with her on the left. Okay. She is Sarah Bridenstein. Pressure on Martin. We'll go Three back to the Rutgers back line has a change up too, which we haven't seen in a while. We've got Shea Holland in for Cassidy Banks next to Gabby Provenzano. Also have Meisel in. Meisel serves a pretty good ball. Trying to find a Lowry who scored one of the two goals in the semifinal game. And now Beal will work as much of the clock as she can with a long way to go. We're halfway through the second half with Michigan still hanging on with that Raleigh Lofton goal in the first half. They have 12 shots, just three for Rutgers. But a pivotal moment is Jade Revere leaving. And we'll see if that changes the dynamic in this one here. Tiernan now with no revere. Skylar Anderson does a really nice job, but Tiernan cuts it back and knocked out of bounds. So Tiernan earns the corner kick, corner kick Rutgers. Rutgers crowd is into this game. Tiernan with another corner kick, corner kick. 
Rutgers. Five Big Ten programs, by the way, rank among the top 35 in the nation in attendance this season. Another tribute to women's soccer, including today's new attendance record. Tiernan sent it across off of Shepard. Sammy Woods gets her head to it. Now Michigan looks prepared to maybe absorb a little bit of pressure. They send it forward again. Michigan goal in the first half. A little Sammy Woods work on the right wing. Raleigh Lawson, who is all over the field for Michigan, does such a good job at holding a run, timing it perfectly, and then slots that ball home on the left. Ninth goal of the season to go with six helpers for Lawson. So play it back to Beal. You can certainly feel the urgency now. And Rutgers with the energy of the crowd behind them. Looking for that equalizer. Michigan plays it forward all game long. Danny Wolf has been strong. As you said, that's a big change for Rutgers bringing in Holland, the veteran senior from Toms River, New Jersey. Kick Michigan. Michigan needed this because they were starting to feel a ton of pressure from Rutgers. They were Rutgers was starting to get on the front foot. Had a decent five minute span there where they were in the attack, had some lift going. So this is one element that Breidenstein does bring off the bench the ability to serve pretty good corners. Flying in there, that was a great ball from Bridenstine, who's replaced Revere in this one, trying to find the head of Skylar Anderson, outside back to outside back. That was my friend Dana, back of the six. Got excited, he sees Skylar Anderson coming. Jumps almost just too high. I think she thought it was gonna get ricocheted up a little bit. Just misjudges that. That was a great ball in by Bridenstine. Just those extra little qualities. So yes, Jade Revere's out, but Bridenstine in. And if Michigan can get more corners, you see the quality of the service from Bridenstine. Talia Ferry, the crowd on their feet. Talia Ferry denied there by Anderson. Meisel back to Talia Ferry. Looking for Kroger. I think it went off of Kroger, so Hillary Beal will take her time. There was a pretty strict message there from the referee. She is, I think, pretty much talking about she's got her eye on any time wasting. That delay of game, game management for Michigan right now, which is so frustrating when you're when you're down a goal, but Michigan, especially as this clock gets a little bit closer to zero, they're gonna want to try and slow this game down as much as possible. Hoffman sends it forward. Danny Wolf out of nowhere wins it. Squared perfectly. Woods. Wolf to Woods. Good pass. Pretty good shot. Just a little bit high. Woods gets in on this. Have a great ball by Wolf. Gets it on her left foot. It's a bouncing ball. Does a good job to get some power behind it. Just can't get it on frame. Good look at Woods. I started to talk about attendance earlier. Penn State, 17th in the country. Michigan, Minnesota, Michigan State, and Rutgers, all the top 31 attendances. This crowd right here could push Rutgers even higher right now. Try to find a seat here at your sack. It is 
just incredible the atmosphere here and give Michigan credit. A lot of maize and blue filling up a whole section here. Got their narrow little section right the right. Tiernan. Tiernan, but right to Beal. Getting a shot on goal, getting some offensive firepower going for Rutgers is going to give them just a little bit more confidence, a little bit momentum to start going off of. Those tiny little wins right now for Rutgers is going to be huge to try and find something in the back of the net in these closing minutes. Boy, as we think about this celebration here, we really got to tip our hat to the Big Ten Conference due to the in part to the comprehensive protocols developed by the Big Ten Return to Competition Task Force and its medical subcommittee and refined during the past year. All 70 Big Ten matches scheduled during conference play were played successfully and safely. That is a testament to the Big Ten. Right in front of Jen Klein, Michigan coach. She was really open about the fact that she felt like, you know what Ali and Talia Ferry can do, but to be able to take care of Tiernan, as you see Jade Revere trying to walk it off here. A lot of soccer played on those feet right there. So you wonder how much they're trying to push her back. Oh, excellent point. As both these teams, I anticipate, will make some deep runs in the NCAA tournament. I feel like both these teams will be hosts for the NCAA tournament. You think about Purdue and even Penn State with maybe an opportunity to host a game or two. Get the Buckeyes in there, the Badgers in there. Number 17, Amira Ali, and number 19, Frank Kelly Ferry. Kroger. Kroger sucks off feet, keeping it to Tiernan. Tiernan with a little more freedom with Revere on the bench. Tiernan with that left foot, and Beal does not spill it. Rutgers missing that front post run right here. Tiernan with a great individual effort down the left flank. Does a little one-two right to left. And puts a decent ball in. She makes Beal come off of her line. Rutgers just missing that near post run. These two teams, big 10 tough. Before Jade Revere injury, you see the shot difference right there. Goal scorer Raleigh Lofman has it. Get out! Get out! Step out! Get Shepard. The general, Big Ten Defender of the Year, Gabby Provenzano. Taken away though by Michigan. Big stage, big moments. That's what you expect from the general right there. Her all game has been so good at trying to thwart this Michigan attack that just flies at you. Of the 15 toughest schedules played by D1 programs so far this season, based on cumulative opposition winning percentage, five are Big Ten schools. Ohio State third, Penn State fourth, Rutgers 11th, your alma mater, Illinois 12th, and Wisconsin 14th. As you see Hernandez coming back into the game, that says a lot about the quality of the Big Ten for women's soccer. You see Hawkinson will come back in, nice run and shift from Lawrence. Hernandez back in, Hawkinson back in here to try to close it out and give Michigan their first Big Ten tournament title since 99. 
They beat Rutgers in the semifinal here in 2019, but fell to Penn State. Rutgers, by the way, with that regular season title was their first ever for any team sport. A lot of firsts for Rutgers as this athletic administration, Mr. Hobbs has done an amazing job at Rutgers, really putting all of their teams back on the map and none of them are an easy out. Meisel. One of the things Michael Neal talked about on our call is just how exciting it is to be on campus right now, be a Rutgers University sport because things are just so positive and moving in a good direction and everybody's feeling the vibes from it. Michigan will be fine with anything like this, knocking the ball out of bounds, taking their time, trying to work a few seconds off. They throw it in. There's the goal scorer, Riley Lofman, as Hernandez will lose it to Tiernan. Ali Shepard taken away by Rutgers. Looking to play it into space. Ali versus Martin. Two first team all big tenders going at it. Martin goes for safety first. Throw in Rutgers. Back line of Michigan is something that we haven't touched on either, but their ability to close the space when they need to and then their ability to quickly drop when they know there's no pressure on the ball is how Aaliyah Martin just takes advantage of opportunities like that. She drops quickly, she can read the game, she can read the ball well, and that's why it's been so hard to get behind them today. Meisel. Daigle into the game for Rutgers. Stratagakis. Provenzano. That's your center back right there trying to win it. And wow, I don't know about that call. Provenzano will get the call though. And this might be a little carryover. So the yellow card issued. Avery Kalita, the freshman. Play on this challenge. Provenzano just watching this ball all the way from the back line, trying to make sure it doesn't go backwards. And just kind of comes in late. It's an interesting, it's an interesting call. I think Provenzano does a good job to sell that and get the card for, for Michigan's Coletta. Driven in, headed out. Danielle Wolf. Big time game for Jen Klein in Michigan. Both sides of the ball. Number 14 on your Big Ten Network screen. Junior from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Jen Klein has made it a priority to try to keep Michigan's finest with the Wolverines program. Meanwhile, Rutgers loaded with Jersey's best. Rutgers trying to find the equalizer. Frankie Taliaferri will step over it. Daigle. They'll go out of bounds off Michigan. Corner kick. Corner kick Rutgers. The shots, the intensity on the faces, the communication, all of it. Fantastic corner, Rutgers driven in. Loose, Stratagakis. And Hernandez, she got a little break, so the engine is ready, and this is a big time engine. Hernandez making the long run. Ripped away by Rutgers. Meisel, the crowd loves it. She miss hits it. One back by Lofman. And Michigan can work some clock here. Hernandez, what a run right there by number 20. Open it! Open it! 
Little early, little early for the corner, I think, Jackie. I agree. Sent across. So McClellan quickly goes behind the net. You see the speed of the ball boy right there, knowing what's at stake here in front of this record crowd. A home field advantage with your own ball boy. <laughs> Ali and Martin, one of those 1v1 battles. Tiernan's open. Instead, they go in the middle. Ali will drop it. Tiernan's still open on the left. Ali, Ali drops it to Talia Ferry. Oh, and it bounces up at the wrong time right there. Trying to turn on it. That was a tough ball to handle for Daigle. Miro, but it's a good little sequence. Amir Ali finds Jinky Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry finds Dangle, Daigle at the top of the box. It's a bouncing ball. It takes one little touch. She can get a cleaner hit on that. Daigle, part of this great freshman class for Rutgers, as they continue to reload with the top players in the state. A lot of them coming from PDA, one of the premier youth soccer clubs in the country. Talia Ferry looking for Ali Stratagakis. Hawkinson. Kroger all over Hawkinson. Gets relief from Martin. Wolf. One back, great tackle, remember that tackle from Lowry. Looked like Ali was fouled, they'll play on advantage. Another tackle coming in, free kick, and a dangerous one coming for Rutgers, and I think the clock is gonna stop as well because of the card, so this will help Rutgers. Shepard gets a yellow, and a free kick coming for the Scarlet Knights. And this starts from the Unbelievably well-timed tackle from Lowry. She finds that ball, and then Amira Ali's able to keep possession. Lowry gets on it again, and Sydney Shepard comes in late, but Lowry, what a great individual effort defensively, and then again offensively to make this play happen. Yellow card for Shepard. That stops the clock. The eyes of Beal deflected, and it goes off Michigan. It'll be a corner kick. Another corner kick coming for Rutgers. It saved a ton of time, that yellow card right there, as we're still five minutes and 20-some seconds with this corner kick coming from Kroger. Kroger, hit hard, Ali with the flick, loose. Lowry gonna drop it all the way back. Meisel sends it back in, everybody on side. Provenzano has stayed forward. Provenzano will fight and scrap to try to get it. She's calling for it. Provenzano was far post, deflected, it'll go to Beal. Kevin Warren, the Big Ten Commissioner, handed out the trophy to Rutgers for field hockey. He is four minutes and change from potentially handing out the trophy to Michigan in women's soccer unless Rutgers can find the equalizer in front of this record-setting crowd. It's go time for Rutgers. You can't take your foot off the pedal if you're them right now. They've got the momentum. Michigan is content to find a slower game. They're going to commit numbers more behind the ball at this point, try to kill this game off. So Rutgers just keep going, keep flying their numbers forward to try and get more opportunities in the attack. Tiernan. Tiernan. Not effective with that cross that time. 14 shots for Michigan. Rutgers has picked up the pace in the second half. They have eight now, but Hernandez headed the other way as Michigan is four minutes away from a Big Ten tournament title. 
Ben Clyde is working the sideline. Not happy with that no call on Hernandez. Meisel to Lowry. Lowry's been solid for Michael Neal here in the second half. Kroger, great touch to Ali. Go ahead. Just about to say that. Lowry's been all over the place making things happen for this Rucker side. Costly foul from the general Provenzano, the Big Ten defender of the year. over the top to Hernandez. Now Hernandez will head to the corner. Now it is time, Jackie Manning. Just put, put her foot on the ball, try to slow things down, kill off as much of the clock as she can. Michigan won it in 97 and again in 99. It's been quite some time. And they talked about before just how you kind of felt like they were knocking on the door of things, especially 2019. They lose in that overtime game to Penn State. Last year, they don't even get to play in their game because they have to forfeit because of COVID. This team and this group of upperclassmen, especially, they've just been so close to finding that championship. Don't forget, the Big Ten men's soccer tournament gets underway after this one as the top-seeded Penn State Nittany Lions take on the Spartans in quarterfinal action. Coverage begins next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. But not after what's going to be a massive celebration. At the moment, Michigan has got a couple fingers wrapped around that trophy. Rutgers going to try to pry him away here in the final 140. Lowry. Kroger falls down, Amir Ali, and Martin sends it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in as Amir Ali closing down. Oh, Beal right there, and that might do it. Hillary Beal, what a leader. Emily Mason, the right back is at the top of the box here. Just one time. One in. minute remaining. Hillary Beal catches it, no problem though. Yes. Michigan, 43 seconds away. We've got a whistle as a Rutgers player is down. Italia Ferry. Is it Provenzano? Yeah. Just went in hard on a tackle. Michigan hoping to take home that trophy right there. And of course, also the outstanding offensive player and defensive player. Take a look at what happened to the Big Ten Defender of the Year on this play. There's a big bouncing ball in. Provenzano comes all in. Looks like a yeah, shin, shin knee to knee type of collision. The Provenzano, I mean, she started that run from 15 yards back, reading that bouncing ball. She went in full speed with everything she had. She's had such a game today. Michael Neal checking on his leader.
What a season it's been for Rutgers. The hottest team in the nation coming in. 13 straight for the Scarlet Knights. And certainly Provenzano a key part of it. Leaving everything out there to try to win the double. Big Ten freshman of the year, Riley Tiernan. Special player. Oh my. This is really tough to see right here with 30 some seconds. Just a delightful, delightful, wonderful student athlete. Gabby Provenzano, the captain from Sarsfield, New Jersey. That does not look great for the heart and soul of this team right there. It looks like it was straight on. It didn't look like it was a twist. I was hoping for more of a deep, tight bone bruise, which is never fun to deal with, but maybe you're thinking it's better than some sort of ligament, but fingers crossed that it is something that can heal quickly because that is a huge, huge part of this Rutgers team. Michigan looking like they're going to win the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. Our thoughts are definitely with Gabby Provenzano and Rutgers, but the Michigan Wolverines really starting to home here late in the season. And with just a second left, the Michigan Wolverines are your 2021 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament champions. group of seniors especially because like we talked about in this game they've just been knocking on the door for a long time and with the performance that this group put together today gotta tip your hat first big 10 tournament title since 1999 Fantastic season for Rutgers, undefeated in the regular season, but today for women's soccer, it's Michigan's day. It is, and their performance throughout this entire tournament has been one of the best that I've seen from start to finish. They put together those big wins against Penn State, back to back, great in the semis with a huge 4 to 1 win over a Purdue team that was so strong, and then to beat this Rutgers team, such a great, great performance for Michigan. The thrill of victory for the Michigan Wolverines. That trophy is headed back to Ann Arbor, their first title since 99. I want to thank Jeff Serman and our outstanding Big Ten Network crew, my outstanding analyst, Jackie Manning, for each and every one of them. I'm Dean Linke. The Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament quarterfinals coming up next with number one Penn State hosting Michigan State. Once again, the Michigan Wolverines, your Big Ten Women's Soccer Champions.